Hello again, this is Kate Brown Pernia for Why Not a Hat. Today, we're going to sure more, um, but I wanted you to see the hat that we worked on last time in Makeup Array. This is the one that we shirred and I wanted you to see how it turned out. The trim on here is a felt flower brooch that I bought at the Smithsonian Craft Show a few years ago. Another option might be something like this if you wanted to glam it up for Christmas or whatever. I wanted to show you one or two more samples of shirring technique for hats, and then we're going to get into making something else. This is another beret, similar in size, but only the center is shirred with a little bit of beading in there, and then some nice little feathers. And just for fun, we're going to get into this today. This is a very old, what we used to call a cocktail hat. Nowadays, they'd call it a fascinator. But I made this when I was living in New York in millinery school. I wanted you to see this one just because I wanted you to see how pretty the polyester satin looks when it's shirred like this. This was a part of a Valentine display in a little store on the Upper West Side. I had a number of hats in there, and this was one of them. And the bailing is this wonderful vintage stuff that you can't really find anymore. But anyway, just wanted to show you that. And I also wanted to say that in my last video, when we made the beret, I demonstrated the technique for shirring. But when I looked at the video afterwards, I felt bad for it because uh, working on the black velvet made it difficult to see what I was doing. And so I wanted to just do a quick review for you today so I'm sure that you can get it and you can play around with it. So let's focus the camera and we'll get started. Here we have a little buckram form and we're gonna get into buckram forms in a minute, but first we're gonna do the shearing thing. So on the buckram form, just like we did with the beret on the pattern, we're just going to center the fabric over the center of the form now you would wear you would use thread that matches your hat fabric but in this case because i'm demonstrating i wanted to use white thread as i thought it would be a little easier for you to see but we came up through the center of the hat and then you grab the fabric just with the tip of the needle drag it back to where you came up and then go back down and that secures that little pleat there Kind of scrunches it up. Then you want to change direction. It doesn't matter what direction, just any direction. Come up and uh, a little bit farther away and do the same thing again, maybe pulling from a different direction. The more you change it out, the more intriguing the shirring gets. It doesn't matter whether you go right to left, left to right, or back and forth. Sometimes I like to sort of move the fabric with my left thumb and then bring the needle up through it like this. Grab the fabric, drag it over and then down. See how it's shaping up? Let's go this direction this time. I'm gonna move this up a little bit with my thumb, bring the needle up grab it from the other direction, and then back down again. So you see how it's working? One more, and then we'll move on. Dropping my needle into there. Here we go. So I hope you get the idea and I hope you'll play around with this technique because it's very creative and lots of fun. So now, right now, I'm going to undo what we just did and we're going to talk about making a buckram frame. In order to get the, the hat or the fascinator or the cocktail hat, whatever you want to call it, to mold to your head, you want to get a little curve in it. So I'm going to show you how to do that. This is a head block. Let me take the 
this off so you can see it. You can get one of these from a millinery supply house. And if you're really interested in hat making, I would recommend you do that because they're very, they're very handy to have. You can do a lot of different things with a headlock. Now, let me see. Yeah, I'm just getting my steam going here. Now, if you don't have a headlock at the moment, you could try using a salad bowl or something else. Um, you might, if it's not wood, you can't push pins into it, but you may get creative and figure out another way to do it. Um, an easy way to form buckram onto a, a block is to just dunk it in water and then stretch it. Um, there's a limit to how much it will do because it is a woven fabric, but um, wetting it completely and shaping it is a little easier than doing it with steam, but the trouble is you have to wait for it to dry, and we don't really have time for that today. So we're going to do it with some steam. What I'm going to do is put my little square of buckram on the form, the head form, and pin all four corners. You want to put some um, plastic on your wood headlock just so that the buckram with the sizing doesn't stick to your headlock. Now, what I'm going to do is I have this, you can use a steam iron for this, but I have this wonderful little uh, clothing steamer that works really well because you can stand it up. You can either hand hold it or stand it up. So in this case, I'm going to hand hold it and just work it all the way around. Be careful not to get your hand in front of it because as you know, steam is hotter than boiling water. You can get a nasty burn. Like I said, if you don't have a steamer, you can do this with your steam iron if you have a good jet of steam on it. Now what I'm going to do is undo these pins and pull the steamed felt. You see how it sort of clings to the head block? I hope you can see this. Let's do it some more on this side. I'm going to do one side at a time here just so I can maximize the use of the steam. Pull it down. You want the bias to go front to back so that you get this stretching effect. Now you don't have to worry about getting all the little edges closed because we're just doing a little part in this case. Or you could do a disc if you wanted to do a different shape hat. But I'm just going to smooth it down. Maybe stretch it one more time here on this side. Good. Now I'm going to lay my pattern. This is my little heart pattern. You can see it's well used. I'm just going to lay it on top of the curved. Let's get this one little cleat out. That's better. Good. Now, here we go. We'll lay this on here. And you can use your push pins or straight pins, whatever, to pin your pattern to the shaped buckram. Now, the flat pattern is not going to lay flat, lay on the curves that you've just made, but that's not a problem. I'll show you what we do. Now you're going to take a good pencil and just draw right on the buckram around your pattern. All the way around. You want to make it nice and dark because when it comes time to cut it, you want to be able to see that line.
I was walking my dog this morning and I was looking at the pretty leaves that are coming down off the trees, like the maple leaves especially. They're so colorful. And it made me think I want to do a maple leaf hat. You could probably do it this way. We'll see. Maybe in a future video. Here we go. So now I've got it traced. I can take my pins out. And if you've steamed it, it doesn't take any time at all for it to dry out. There you see. Now we're going to unpin it. Now when you cut buckram, let's peel it off here. Nice. When you cut buckram, you don't want to use your good scissors. You want to use your paper scissors because buckram is really hard on scissors. So we'll just cut around. Like that. Now, once you've got your buckram cut out, you want to put a wire around the edge to give it some extra strength. Let me turn this off. You're going to use number 21 millinery wire, which you can get from Judith M or any other millinery supplier you may use. And you're just going to measure around your heart with a little extra, maybe an inch or so extra that you can overlap at the end. And when I do this wiring, especially on a heart shape, I like to start at the point so I can make sure that that nice little point is in the right spot. So let's do this. I've got my needle threaded and I've already taken one stitch at the tip. At the tip of my heart. And I'm going to overlap the wire. And the stitch you're going to use is a buttonhole stitch. It locks, it locks the wire on to the edge of the hat. You want to get it as close to the edge as you can. Now I'm going to use a couple of clips just to sort of hold this out of my way. If you have wonder clips, that would be even better. I ordered some, but they haven't come yet. These are a little bit bigger, so it's easier to get your thread tangled up in them, but let's try it. Okay, so now I like to hold the thread down with my thumb of my left hand and then bring my needle from the underside through the in, into the loop made by your finger holding that butt. You see, just down through the loop. Let's get rid of these scissors so they don't catch me up. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect, but as close as you can to keeping it right at the edge, the better. Now, here we go. Thread down. Hold it with your thumb, needle comes up in the loop, and then you just catches on the buckram, you have to untangle it. Here we go. So you do this all the way around the hat. And when you get to the center of your heart here, you're going to bend that up just an inch into the next part of the heart. And then when you bring this side down, you'll just trim off the extra wire. I've already, I'm going to knot this off because I've got one already wired and we can move on to the next step. You don't have to watch me stitch all the way around this hat, but I hope you get the idea. Here we go. Now here's one. We've already got the wire all the way around. You see how I, I bent that that little extra wire up and stopped it after about an inch. Now this is something called French elastic. 
It's, um, it's a little one inch crinoline bias strip. And what you do is you use this to cover your wire and it gives you something also to sew to. We're just going to base this, <laughs> it's all tangled up with my thread here. Wouldn't you know? I threaded my needle to try to get ahead of the game here, but I created a problem for myself. I think, here we go. Oh darn it, I'm just gonna do this. Have to re-thread the needle, but it's quicker. Now, as you're pulling, as you are, that must be the mailman my dog is barking at, her mortal enemy. You're just going to base this on, and as you sew, you're going to tug, you're going to tug this bias strip a little bit to get it to hug the wire. And this goes pretty quickly. Because you just need a basting stitch. Now, if you poke yourself and bleed, like I just did, I'll tell you a little trick that Betty Williams, who ran a costume shop I worked in in New York City, taught me years ago. I was working on some white satin ballet tutus for City Ballet, and at the very end of this $1,500 tutu, I stuck my finger and bled on the white satin, and I thought I would just die. But Betty said, no problem. And she gave me a little piece of cotton string and said, chew on this, which I did. And then she took that cotton string with my saliva on it and dabbed on that little bloody spot that I had made. And the blood came right out. Isn't that a neat trick? Has to be the same person who bled on it, though. Anyway, I thought I'd just pass that on because we do poke ourselves quite a bit when we're doing this kind of work. Not a problem. So, I hope you've enjoyed this little video. I'm just going to keep on stitching around here. And then, as you saw, I'll probably sure some fabric onto this little valentine. But if you like this video, I hope you'll po post a thumbs up and uh, subscribe. And please make a comment in the, com in the comment section about anything you would like me to teach, because I'm open to suggestion. I worry about running out of ideas to teach on these little videos. So enjoy and make some hats and wear some hats and have fun because why not a hat?